Hi, my name is Nate Keefe. I'm a sales engineer with Scribe Software. Uh, I'm doing a companion video to a blog post I wrote about outgrowing the data loader. The Apex data loader for Salesforce is, is really a great import tool. It's, it's very fast, it's quick, and it's easy to use, but there's definitely some drawbacks in it as far as scalability and reliability goes. So if you've kind of found yourself doing a lot of the same imports daily, you're, you're having trouble getting the Windows scheduler to work for it, or there's just a lot of weird errors going on, I think that you're going to really like the way our Scribe Online product works so that you're able to customize these imports a little bit more than you have been with the data loader. So in the blog post, I highlighted a lot of different features between the two and, and comparing them, but I wanted to do a video to kind of highlight more of, the, of our product design and, and demonstrate why you'd be able to use Scribe Online for your imports and really scale out your imports and, and have something that's a little bit more reliable. So if you're not really familiar with Scribe Online, we have a lot of great video content and blog posts about our architecture and everything from setting up an account to you know installing an agent. So definitely check out our blog at our help center uh, if you're looking to really get started. Or if there's something on this video that I missed that you didn't see in the comparison or that you'd like to see, definitely contact us and we'll be happy to help. So let's get into one of the maps that I have created and we can kind of talk about the differences between the data loader and then some of the advantages to using Scribe Online. One of the fastest ways that you're going to be able to expand your imports into Salesforce is the advanced maps. So inside of the advanced maps, you're going to see kind of a, a palette and a canvas set up to visually build out what you want this import to do. So this map's already set up. I have a sample text connection, which every user is going to have in Scrum Online, and I'm connected to Salesforce. And these blocks are representative of operations that I'm allowed to perform on this connection. So you're going to see these are the same type of blocks you would see in the data loader when you first start it. So instead of insert, we have create, we have delete, update, upsert. On our source side, we have a query block. So if I was connecting to Salesforce on the source, I'd be able to query that as well. So these blocks are going to be able to be pulled out to actually perform what I want to do with my data. And so one of my biggest gripes about the data loader was that I could only choose one operation that I wanted to perform with my source data. So one of the nice things about Scribe Online is I can have one text file with as many rows as I want, and I can perform multiple operations. So let's go through this map. If I want to create a query on a, temp, a text file, I'll pull this query block out, drop it on my palette, and just configure it to query the text file that I want. So I just have one here. We're going to get some leads out of this text file locally. And for each result, so we're actually going to cycle through these operations for each text lead that I get. If I just want to do an upsert to leads, that's OK. So let's pull out the upsert block. And I'm going to be able to configure that to upsert leads. So this is the same thing that you're used to with the data loader. I'll choose my entity. I'm going to see all of the entities from my Salesforce, custom included. And I'll also even be able to use the batch processing if I need to. And after that, I'm going to choose the fields that I want to map. So with Scribe Online, we're going to map fields almost backwards of how you're used to doing it in the data loader. I'm going to drag source fields onto the target. Um, and really to get started, what I can also do is I can just perform an auto link and we'll match based on uh, like names. So if I don't have identical names for, for all the matches, I'll just do another drag and drop. You're used to that as well. And where I'll actually be able to expand upon this is I can write formulas for these data links. So I know with Scribe Online that the company field is required. I must have that to create a lead. So what if I don't have a, a business name from my lead? Maybe they didn't give it to me. So I can even write in a formula here that would give it a default value. So this is kind of similar to how you might be preparing your data for import now. You're using those Excel formulas to say if it's blank, give it a default value. Well, I can do that in here for all, my, all of my records that I'm going to process. So at this field, if I want to set up a formula that would look to see if this is null. I'll go through here the function list. I'll say is null or empty. This is going to bring me back a true or false. So now I'm going to wrap this in an if statement. 
just like you're used to in Excel, I have a condition if this is blank or not. So if it's blank, true, I'm going to say uh, no company given. If it's false, then I want to map in its business name. So I'll copy that, paste, and now I can validate that my syntax is correct. All of these functions are going to have a description of their arguments, you know, how they're used, and even examples of it. So after I've determined how I want to upsert this lead, maybe this is actually, this isn't just leads, this comes from a marketing list. Maybe this is some kind of a campaign. So not only do I want to make sure the lead exists, I want to create an activity for that lead. So that's another operation that I'm going to perform on Salesforce using the same data. So in that scenario, in the data loader, I need to go out, I need to create a new import, I need to map more files to it. And they do have a nice feature where you can upsert with relationships. So if I have custom fields set up in Salesforce as external IDs and I'm relating them, I can do two separate imports and have my lead upsert and my task upsert be related, but I don't even need to do that in Scribe Online. I'll just pull out another upsert block and I'll be able to configure this to go to the task entity. Now I'll go in, I'll map the fields to my task entity. I can map whatever I need in here. And when I'm done, I'm gonna, for every text lead, upsert a lead and then upsert a task. So we have multiple operations per row and we also have manipulations of the data before we send it to Salesforce. And we've done all this all through a UI that's also drag and drop. We can also auto link. So it's not really that foreign to us. So if this is the first time I'm using Scribe or this is the first import that I've done uh, with this text file. Maybe it's a new uh, import. I can actually go through and test it out before I run it. So either I get a smaller text file and just run in, you know, 10 leads and see what happens or I can run through the debug process running it one operation at a time. So I'm going to perform a query. Let's see those results. What's that uh, lead that I have from my text? And then tell me what I'm about to do for this upsert to Salesforce. And just by stepping through this, I'll see what's about to happen with the upsert and then what actually happens when I upsert it to Salesforce. So I would be able to stop this debug right after it upsert upserted this lead to Salesforce and check out what was was that lead created or was there an error that come back and be able to make changes based on what the result was and I can do that for as many rows as I want just to make sure that this is going to work the way that I want it to work after I have the map configured I'll be able to close it out if I have multiple maps in here that's okay I'm going to be able to run these all one at a time from the top down so if I'm using the data loader today to do multiple different imports, I need to do those separately. In Scribe Online, I just need to save all these maps, enable them, and now I can run them all kind of top down. Once I have my maps, now I can go into scheduling it. So to schedule it, all I need to do is choose what my recurring basis is going to be. So if I want to run this every weekday, at 5 a.m. before everyone gets into the company, I could do that. If I want to run this, check for that text file every 30 minutes, every 10 minutes, this is where I would go to set this up. So this isn't setting up on my machine a Windows scheduler. This is actually writing into this map that it needs to run every 30 minutes every weekday. So by saving this, I have multiple imports all looking at a directory that is going to have text imports for Salesforce. It's going to run it based on a schedule that I don't need to be at my machine to run. And I've even changed some of my data links so that I can put in default values so that those fields don't fail. And kind of being on a recurring basis, if I want to run this before I get into the office, if there's any issues with this import, maybe if my data came in wrong or if I change the password on my Salesforce, I'm going to want to know about that when I do get into the office. So built into this solution, when it's being run, after it's finished, if there's any errors that occurred on my rows or if I really just can't connect to Salesforce, I'm going to get an email alert from this solution saying what that failure was and what that error message was. And that would trigger me to come into Scribe Online and look at the history of what happened with this job. So I can see in here how um, 
if I have this text file open by another program that's logging it, it's not going to run. I can see in here if I've run through 15 rows and 15 of them failed, or if I ran through 100 rows and only 15 failed, I'll be able to see what those error messages are. And those are going to be coming right from Salesforce or right from my target. And I'm going to see the source data associated with them. So this is really good for troubleshooting because I'm going to see not only what the error message is, the source data. So I can go up and I can actually change my mapping to fix this issue. If it's just a formula that I need, if I need to add another operation or lookup, I can do that in my map then I can go back to this solution where 15 records failed and I'd be able to reprocess just those 15 rows. So if I'm going through hundreds or thousands of records and only have a handful that failed, I don't need to go back into my text file, find those failures and go re-import them. Or even worse, maybe I have to re-import that whole file. I could just make a change in here and then just rerun those failed rows. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please reach out. Thanks.